And in this video, we are going to talk about what I dose into my aquarium. But before we all get started, I just want to say thank you to all of you for subscribing to my channel. Um, it really tells me that there's an audience out there and I want to say thank you to everyone who's commenting below. Uh, as you can see in all of the previous videos, I try to comment to every single one of those or try to reply to them. Um, also, if you haven't already, please just hit subscribe down there because I'm going to do my best to release videos every single week. So for this particular video, I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to start off with talking about nutrient dosing. Uh, something very basic and then at the end I'm going to finish off with some of my reef keeping thoughts So let's jump behind the camera and then we'll take a look at the aquarium and talk about what I dose into this tank All right, everyone So we are going to talk about what conditions I keep this aquarium in and what I dose to get the best colors out of my corals now I just want to preface this video by saying that what I do in my aquarium is specific to my system. So this may not necessarily work for you, but it's something that I found based upon my own anecdotal evidence from time that I've spent watching and observing my corals. And I, just like every single other person out there, my aquarium isn't immune to the swings and the ups and downs of reef keeping and the washes of color that come back and forth from SPS corals. Every single person feeds their aquarium. And the first thing that I feed, of course, is liquid mysis. Uh, that's really good for my fish because I can put in as little or as much as I want and it enables me to control my dosing every single morning. This has also been a huge time saver for me. So that's a great product. Second thing that I dose is nitrate and I put in nitrate every single day. Um, as soon as you dose nitrate, you will start to see your corals respond very, very quickly, especially if they are starved of nitrates in your system. The next thing I also dose is PO4. So PO4 for me is something that also gets consumed very quickly in my aquarium. And so I supplement that as well. And let's not forget, I also dose amino acids every now and then. So what's the point of all of this? Whenever you dose into your aquarium, it should be a heavy import and heavy export system. So natural seawater has very low detectable nutrient levels. We're talking extremely low levels of nitrate, extremely low levels of phosphate. But what a lot of aquarists don't actually remember is that those levels of natural seawater are constantly changing. So sometimes you may get huge washes of nutrient dense water flushing out of river systems into the reef. Or sometimes you might get massive phytoplankton blooms that constantly feed the corals in the reef system. And so in our aquariums, our water is actually extremely clean compared to what's out there in the reef when it comes to living creatures. So what I'd like to propose to everyone is a very heavy input system and a very heavy export system to remove those nutrients. Now in my system, I go through roughly around about minus two ppm of nitrate per day and roughly around about minus 0 0.01 to 0 0.02 uh, ppm of phosphate daily. So that for me means that I have to consistently dose into this aquarium nitrates and phosphates. Now, of course, there are other videos out there that say you don't need to dose amino acids. You don't need to dose nitrates. You don't need to dose phosphates into your system. And my thoughts on that are my system here has very little Fish. I mean, if you think about it, I've got my chromis, I've got my clowns, and I've got a ras. And so when it comes down to it, I, I am not able to feed a whole ton of food and my fish aren't able to produce a whole ton of waste to essentially feed my corals and the bacteria that exists in my system. So how do I keep my corals colorful despite the very low amount of nutrients that enter the system and the very low amount of fish waste that's being added to the system. And it comes down to something that I think stabilizes everything. 
and that's bacteria. Now bacteria in this system is a vital part of maintaining coral health and I think it's one of those overlooked aspects of reef keeping because it's just something that we never ever see and so to maintain bacteria in this system what I've actually done from the very beginning is I carbon dose so you can use any sort of carbon dosing to your preference you can use vinegar you can use vodka but personally I have chosen to carbon dose here minus NP Pro and the reason why I chose that is because vinegar for me in the past used to bring my pH down. The other thing that vinegar caused in my system, and it may be just my own personal system, was that for some reason, the, the bandwidth of feeding that vinegar has seemed to promote a little bit of cyanobacteria in my aquarium. So I dose a very specific polymer product that means that bacteria is being fed as opposed to all of the other nasties. So if I'm running a very low nutrient system, why is it that I'm carbon dosing? Because doesn't carbon dosing reduce our nutrients overall? Well, yes, but to me, that's the side effect of carbon dosing. Our corals, if you look at our systems and the way that corals are designed with their very tiny mouths and their, their extremely small polyps, corals are constantly feeding on bacteria and it is within that bacteria that we find nitrates and phosphates. And so how my system works is I input nitrates, I input phosphates, and then I use bacteria to take it out. So it's a heavy input and a heavy export. That's my current thoughts on dosing. Of course, the other things that I dose to get really, really good color is your trace elements and of course, potassium. And those things also work on a very similar system. You want to be able to import as much trace elements as possible, as much potassium as possible, but also have your system pull out as much trace elements and potassium as possible. This means that the system overall is in balance. So onto my reefer thoughts. I essentially run a system that works on a negative nutrient coefficient. So what happens in my system is that nutrients get input into the system and my nutrients are constantly going down. Now that for me is something that is a bit of a double-edged sword because what happens is, yes, I can feed as much as I want. Yes, I can add as much aminos and nitrates and phosphates within reason, of course. And at the end of the day, I know that my nutrients will not climb up to a level that is going to be browning out my SPS corals. The problem is, however, when you run into a situation where nutrients bottom out. And what I have found personally in my system is that SPS corals do not like it when nutrients bottom out to dead zero. Now that, of course, is different for some other people's systems. But for mine, what I've noticed is if I'm running on zero parts per billion of phosphate for more than two, three or four days, my corals start to essentially wash out and bleach out. And that's something that's quite dangerous. So I guess my reefing thought is this, would you rather run a system that is effectively increasing in nutrients over time or decreasing in nutrients over time and then making adjustments for that? The other thing I also, I also wanna talk about is what sort of nutrients are we importing into our system and what is the role of organic versus inorganic nitrate and phosphate forms? So if you think about it, a lot of people on the forum say, oh, if you wanna increase your phosphates or if you want to increase your nitrates, just feed more. But to me, that seems to not quite make sense simply because when you are feeding in solid foods such as mysis or fish meal or, or shrimp, then yes, you are importing a little bit of nutrients and phosphate into the system, but there's a little bit of a delayed response because it does take time for bacteria to break that down. It then takes time for the corals to consume it. And then it takes time for the corals to convert that into the amino acids and the sugars that then help fuel the zooxanthellae in our corals. So one of my thoughts here, and again, I'm no biologist guy or no chemistry guy, but one of my thoughts is what's the role of 
inorganic phosphate and inorganic nitrogen within our system. So are we better off dosing in, for example, monopotassium phosphate? Are we better off dosing in a little bit of potassium nitrate? Are we better off dosing just a little bit of sodium nitrate into our aquariums? I guess these are questions that I'd like to ask you and find out your experience. But personally for me, these two things, nitrate and phosphate dosing have been extremely helpful in getting my SPS to color up. Now there are lots of videos online that you'll see on YouTube where people have been nitrate dosing and they've seen very similar results as well. Of course, the final question is this, at what level should we be maintaining our nitrates? Should we be keeping them at say five ppm and letting them drop to zero? Or should we be, should we be keeping them at around 10 ppm and letting them drop down to five? I guess these are questions that I'll experiment with over time. But for now, that's what I dose in my aquarium to ensure that my SPS are healthy, that they are colorful. And I hope that that's something that's given you a little bit of thought as well. Of course, I don't promise any true answers for you here. This of course isn't a peer reviewed video, but I hope that these reefing thoughts give you just a little bit of a, an inkling to experiment with nitrate dosing because a lot of people think, hey, let's keep my aquarium at 3 ppm of nitrate and 0 0.03 ppm of phosphate. So they don't feed anything, they don't add anything to the system. And yes, their water is very much like seawater, whilst at the same time, their corals are dulling out and eventually dying or just merely surviving. So comment below if you've got some thoughts on this, feel free to correct me, feel free to add more knowledge to this. As you can tell, I really, really like engaging in the conversation. And once again, if you haven't subscribed, please just hit the subscribe button. I'm going to do another video next week on how I keep this aquarium topped up. And maybe in the future, I'll talk about some of the more pro aquascaping tips that I haven't really covered in some of the other videos so far, because there's a couple of little things that I do in this aquarium that make it just a little bit more unique than some of my previous aquascapes. All right, everyone, thanks for listening in and I will see you all in the next video. Cheers, everyone. Bye.